بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is going to be the last part of chapter 8 the transient response of uh, uh, first and second order system Today we're going to conclude the second order system Okay uh, What we're going to talk about today uh, uh, We're going to talk about the uh, transient the, the specifications of the transient response Okay, what are the specifications of the transient response of second order system? This is the major topic of today. Okay, we will understand that and we will focus what we need. Okay, uh, we will talk briefly about the uh, step response of uh, second order system force system because it, there is not, nothing much new in this uh, example. It belongs, it will be similar to these cases. All right, we'll talk about an under dam. And the estimate of the time response will be part of the specifications. Okay, let me go first with this uh, simple example. Uh, this is an example of a uh, uh, second order system with a damper and it's under damp. Okay, under damp. So if it's under damp, what do you think the oscillation will be? It will be, uh, what will be the uh, response? It will be uh, harmonic, right? Sinusoidal. All right, we did this for uh, under dam case. What's new here? What's new that we added a external force, step function. Is there anything will be changed here? Is it gonna change the transient response? No, it will be harmonic. So before we draw, you, you can either use what we learned in chapter uh, three to do it step by step and then get the solution and then draw it using MATLAB. And there is an easier way, okay, a sketch, how to do this sketch? All you need to know, where is the initial value from the applying initial value theorem? You need, of course, this one to solve for xs. And you need to uh, get how much the final value, how much the final value from final value theorem. All these are what you need to calculate. Okay. So you need to, you know whether the function will uh, start, you know where the function will end. And then the rest will be similar to what we did in the Case number two in the uh, transient response of uh, under dam systems. Okay, that 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 will be all. So it will only the, the difference here will be only the final value will be different. That's all. But the oscillation, the period, huh? The uh, damping, uh, uh, the damped the natural frequency will be exactly the same. It will be exactly the same. All right. Now let's go to the transient response of second order system. Now. What are the specifications of the transient response that you are interested in? In other words, when you want to control a second order system, of course here we're talking about second order system. And we're talking about under damped, huh? Like most of the cases under damped. Okay, like a vibration. Okay, these are the most common, uh, popular case. Second order system, under damp. So we will have harmonic oscillation. Now, when you look at this uh, response, this is force response, right? Step response, right? It looks like a step input for a second order system under damp. When you look at this uh, transient response, okay? This is the transient response, right? Area. This is the steady state. You see that? Steady state. This one, transient response. Okay. When you look at this area, what's your interests? There are five uh, numbers or specification that you are interested in. Delay time, the time to reach half of the final value. Rise time, the time to go from zero to 100. This is the most common, from zero to 100 or from 10 to 90. Peak time, the time it takes to reach the first peak. Uh, maximum percent overshoot. How much this overshoot with respect to the steady state value? Settling time, the time it takes to reach and stay within 2% of the final value. We call this the settling time. These are the two most important. This is number five. These are the two most important values that you always look for. Settling time and the overshoot. Okay. Settling time, the time it takes to reach, this is the default. The time it takes to reach to stay within 2%, this is the default. 
Okay, and usually you can calculate it from what the um, from the uh, uh, time constant. Okay, that we calculated in chapter uh, six, I believe. I will show you uh, in the next slide how much is that the time constant. It's one over zeta omega n, I believe. Tau will be uh, one over uh, zeta omega n. How did I how did I get this from the solution? From the power, if you remember the power value of the solution, like this one, where is it? This one. How much the power, if you multiply by this, will change it to minus one? It will be one over zeta omega n. Okay. So these are the two most important numbers when you design the transient response of, or when you want to control, in other words, when you want to control the transient response of second order system, these are the two most important specifications. Number one, the overshoot. Like, if this is a suspension system, if this is the response of a suspension system of your car, and you want to design it, okay, you want to control it. So what are the most two important? The overshoot. How much this peak with respect to the steady state? This is the first impact you will feel when you hit a bump on the road. Also, how much it will take you to reach and stay within 2% of the final value? In other words, how much it will take in order to feel comfortable with no more vibrations, right? This is what we call settling time, okay? All right. These are the two most important numbers. So uh, you can you can measure them. These two values you can measure them if you have the transient response already from an experiment. Or if you know your model, if you know your model, all you have to do just find the roots of the characteristic equation. These are the roots, of course, under damped solution. This is for under damped system. From the roots, you know everything. You can find the settling time. It will be four over zeta omega again, which is the magnitude of the real part of your root, this is the real part. Or we call them pools, by the way, the roots of the characteristic equation, we call them pools. So this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. If you draw them here, this is the real, this is the imaginary, okay? Okay, so this is the four over real part, it will give you 2%, and this is the maximum overshoot it will be e to the power minus pi, the real part, over the imaginary part. These are the two most important things. Okay, you don't have to memorize them, but you need to understand them. Okay? All right. And this is all, okay, for the uh, uh, second order. So, yeah, here where you can find the time constant, we already derived that. Yes, from the, the power. And this is the conclusion of this chapter. All right? All right, so what do you expect to see from this chapter? Either you know the model, the equation of motion or the transfer function, and you want to draw the response, or you know the response from an experiment, the transient response, and you want to find the model, the transfer function. Okay, for first order system, it's very simple. Usually we have a step input. Okay, and there is one kind of uh, response. You, you only need to find tau. Everything will depend on tau. But for second order system, there are more cases, okay, depending on how much zeta do you have. Okay, if you have zeta less than one, zeta equal to one, less zeta greater than one, what are the cases? Under damped, critically damped, over damped, how to draw the uh, transient response. Or if you are in the field and you have under damped system and you don't know what's the model or the transfer function, so you have to run an experiment and get a uh, response similar to this one and then calculate the log decrement. And from the log decrement, you will know zeta. And also you will know uh, the uh, 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 damped natural frequency. And then you will know your transfer function. Okay, that will be all. Thank you very much for listening.